a voice like a trumpet called out to me. Come up to heaven and see what will be. And then in the spirit my eyes were shown, a shining rainbow all around God's throne. Twenty-four elders all dressed in white, praise the Almighty both day and night. Each of the elders is wearing a crown. They cast them down. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord Almighty. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord Most High. You are worthy, worthy is the Lord to receive power and glory forevermore.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. From you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. lesson for today is from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 15 through 26. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120. And he said, Brothers, 
the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share of this ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, al that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, Show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Our Psalter for today is from Psalm 47, which we will read responsibly by half verse. O oh, clap your hands together, all you peoples. For the Lord Most High is to be feared. He shall subdue the peoples under us. He shall choose our inheritance for us. God has gone up with a shout of triumph. O oh, sing praises, sing praises unto our God. O oh, sing praises, sing praises unto our King. For God is the King of all the earth. Speak upon my praise him all. God reigns over the nations. God sits on the Lord's throne. The princes of the peoples are gathered with the people of the God of Abraham.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost, except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the word has hated them, but the world has hated them because you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself, that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. If someone prays for you, is that good news or bad news? <laughs> Probably both. The fact is, The fact that we need prayers is a measure of the reality of the world we live in. The world is broken. We're broken. Both are in need of repair of various kinds and degrees. That's bad news. But that someone's interceding for us to God surely is good news, right? When we're honest, we recognize we need help. And the shortest road to getting it is asking. When someone else is asking our assistance on God's behalf, surely that's good news. Well, that gets to the heart, I think, of today's gospel reading. We're in the middle of that section that commentators usually refer to as Jesus' high priestly prayer. It's just before his arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's praying for his disciples then, but he's also praying for us now. If we read just one verse further to verse 20, we would have heard Jesus pray, I don't ask for these only, but for those who will believe in me through their word. His prayer is for all his disciples in all times and in all places. And he asks for important things of his Father for us. He prays that God will keep his disciples just as he's kept them safe for the three years he's been with them. He asks that they will be one, kept united. That they would have Jesus' joy. That they would be kept from the evil one. And that God will sanctify them in the truth. Make them holy. There is a tremendous amount of blessing in what Jesus prays for us here. But it should also be a bit sobering. Why does Jesus pray these things? These are his final words before his arrest. The last thing he has to say for his disciples. Why is he so concerned about our unity? Our need to be guarded, particularly from evil. And the need to be sanctified. Both our lessons today reference a case in point. 
Judas Iscariot. Jesus refers to him in verse 12 as the only disciple that he lost, the son of destruction, he says. We're foretold. And that's exactly how Peter refers to Judas in Acts chapter 1 this morning. His actions, he says, are the fulfillment of the scriptures. Peter says in verse 25 that Jesus, Judas turned aside to his own place. It was a path by him freely chosen, even if foreseen. How does he come to such a fate? Peter's comments should give us cause to wonder. He says of Judas that he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. That's Judas. He had a place, Peter said, in this ministry and apostleship. Judas was, if you were, the ultimate insider, a chief among Jesus' disciples, privileged to hear the teaching that he has given explained in a way the crowd didn't get. And an eyewitness miracle to everything Jesus did. Yet, he fell. A sad and sobering outcome to a promising beginning. It has been wisely said, the one most in danger of falling is the one who does not believe they are. The one most in danger of falling is the one who doesn't believe they are. This is the reason for Jesus' prayer. We can fall into the same trap as Judas. We're made of no better stuff than he was. What we do know about his fall is it would appear that money is wrapped up in it. It's the recurring theme of what we know about Judas. We're told in the Gospels that he was responsible for the common purse. He was the banker, if you will, for this traveling band that went about the countryside with Jesus. And we're told just a few chapters earlier in John chapter 12 that when the disciples are indignant at the incredible value, the extravagant worth of this perfume that Mary has poured out upon Jesus when she anoints him, they say that Judas is one of the ones sort of leading the charge, criticizing this extravagant act of love. Does so, we're told, because he stole from the common purse. We don't know what disordered loves he stole in order to satisfy. Perhaps pleasure, power, image, or just simple love of wealth. But what surely seemed a small thing at first You know, a few shekels here, a few shekels there. What began small led in time to a much bigger betrayal of trust. If we can deceive our own conscience to betray trust in a small thing, it is only a short step to the betrayal of trust in much larger matters, even to the point of betraying Jesus. For Judas... A mere 30 pieces of silver appears to have been enough. The means of his downfall, if not the root. Money makes all kinds of passions possible. Every alternative source of security and significance that we pursue in place of God. That is how anyone can lose their way. When our hearts are captured by something other than God when something else becomes our first priority. Humbly aware that we are susceptible just as Judas was, how do we avoid walking the same tragic path as he did? That brings us back to Jesus' prayer. And it is good news. Remember first, it is Jesus who is praying for us. What could be better news than knowing that the Lord and Creator of all things is interceding for you? The one who spoke creation into being speaks now on your behalf. The incarnate Word knows your frailties and mine, knows that we need help. And so He speaks. 
He invokes the protection of God himself. Nothing can touch us that is not first passed through God's loving hands and can be used for his redeeming purposes. That alone should be encouraging. But it's not his only provision for us in this prayer. Jesus prays repeatedly for our unity, in part because we need each other. The gathered body of believers is part of his provision for us to encourage us when we're discouraged, support us when we are weak, instruct us when we are foolish. It is how Jesus' ministry continues through us, the body of Christ. It's what we're sent into the world to do and be. It is not a solo mission because we need help. The church is for us and also part of the answer to Jesus' prayer. Finally, and most importantly, though, Jesus gives us himself. This is our sure anchor, our true north, what we set our hearts upon. Jesus says, for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in the truth. In the Greek, the common use of the word consecrate, to, to set apart, to make holy, was what you did with a sacrifice. For that is what Jesus has come to do and to be. To sacrifice his life, that we might have life. To take the sin of the world upon himself. The consequences of every failing like that of Jesus. Every rejection of God to go our own way. To walk in our own path. And the death that it deserves in order that we might instead receive the very life of God, be set apart, made holy, made sons and daughters of God. This is the joy Jesus speaks of, to know that in him your death sentence has been commuted. Every failing, no matter how large or small, things done and left undone, has been washed away. Not because we earned it or deserved it, but because God so loved the world. Because we need help. All that is required is that we come to Jesus to receive it and never stop coming. This in the final analysis is the difference between Peter and Judas, both of whom we see in today's lesson. Both betrayed Jesus when it mattered the most. But Judas, we're told, walked away, went to his own place. Peter repented. He came back, back to his fellow apostles, back to Jesus, back to the one who loved him enough to go to the cross for him, even though he knew precisely how he would be betrayed. That is the love that drew Peter back and calls to us as well. No matter how good or how bad we think we are, our path should be no different than that of Peter. When we need help, we look to him. That's Jesus' prayer for us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you so loved us that since you, you sent your Son into the world to redeem us and set us free from the power of sin and death, sent him, Lord, to take our place, that we might have his. Grant us grace, Lord, in the midst of all of this life that tempts and distracts us to never forget this great truth of who we are and at what great price at what great love that has been made possible. May all we say and do be for your glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
standing, let us now affirm our faith by reciting the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Foley Beach, our Archbishop, for Mark Lawrence, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially Joe, our president, the members of Congress, the justices of the Supreme Court, and the state and local authorities. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially Pat Green, the Ald family, Richard Billington, Sue and Steve Bradley, Tracy Harper, Jenny Henderson, the Lachiot family, Constance Lee, Wayne Osborne Jr., Pat and Wayne Outlaw, Jennifer and Elena Patterson and family, Ellen and Gary Pruitt, the Wilms family. For our expectant mothers, Sean Haviland Huthwaite, Amanda Weston Nab. For our homebound, Francis Cheatham, Pat McCullough, Louise Perry, Becky Tootin, Grace Young. And for our deployed military, Brian Boyer and Michael Dean. Please pray for all men and women serving in the military and for Bishop Campicha and the Diocese of Marsabit, Kenya, especially our tree church partners in game, Elabor, Mekona, Gora Ricosa, and Badasa, and for our Haitian partners in the Church of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, especially Dr. Diana Lowndes, Mother of Rick Lowndes, in thanksgiving, let us pray, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we, we pray for our local ministry partner, the East Cooper Faith Network, and their liter literacy-focused initiative, iBeam, which provides reading mentors for second through fifth grade students in our community. While volunteer mentors are still not allowed to go into the schools, we pray that, that the program leaders and educators will have wisdom in designing creative ways to provide the students with support during this time. We ask that you bless the students and mentors of this program and that you continue to raise up new reading mentors from within our congregation for this grace-giving ministry when the program is able to resume. 
praying together. Almighty and most merciful God, in this time of the coronavirus pandemic and all other perils of our world, we flee to you for strength and protection. Deliver us, we beseech you, from our peril. Give still and success to all those who minister to the sick. By prospering, make use of for their care and cure. And grant that, perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts to that heavenly wisdom which leads to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and in true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. The peace of the Lord. Well, good morning and welcome. So glad you're worshiping with us today. We have several announcements to share with you. If you are interested in being a reader of the lessons and prayer of the prayers at the 9 o'clock service, we're looking for some folks to fill out our roster there, um, which we have started back doing today, this Sunday. Um, and so just let Howard Harder in the church office, our parish administrator, know if you're interested in doing that. Next Sunday is Confirmation Sunday. It'll be a, the last annual visitation to us by Bishop Lawrence. We'll have elected a new bishop uh, by next year when, when our time comes around. And so I hope that you'll be here with us next week. It'll be a, a big Sunday for us. We'll have a different service time schedule. We'll have 8 and 9.30, no discipleship classes, and then 11 o'clock here in the church for confirmation with a reception on the quad afterwards for the bishop and the confirmands. If you are able, please sign up uh, on the website uh, to bring uh, some food for that. We'll have a gift for the bishop from the congregation for him and Allison and uh, in appreciation for his ministry. Uh, the choir is going to sing a special song for him uh, at the time of communion. Um, so it'll be a big Sunday and I hope you'll, you'll come and be a part of it. We're going to hopefully have our new uh, ACNA 2019 prayer books in the pews at that time, so um, a good time to, to gather as the body of Christ. The Meals on Wheels ministry is back, as we've been telling you, and if you're interested in helping make or pack those meals, again, let Howard Harder in the church office know we'd, we'd love to have you be part of that long-time 
um, ministry here at Christ Church. The Daughters of the King chapter is meeting in the parish hall on Monday the 24th uh, with me at 6.30. And I, it's an important meeting, and I hope that you will, uh, daughters, make an every effort to come and be there for the information I'm going to share with you that evening. On uh, the 30th of May, uh, two Sundays from now, uh, we have an acolyte, old and new acolyte, training here in the church. Uh, go out and have a little bit of, of, um, of reception for Lorna. We're going to celebrate that day. It's her last day after 30 plus years of being our director of ministry music and um, celebrate all that. But then slide back in here, acolytes, and have a training time as we're, again, getting all the lay liturgical ministries uh, back on schedule beginning this Sunday. Um, the Men of Christ Church are cooking uh, barbecue plates uh, to be eaten uh, June 5th and 6th. And uh, as the last month's one went to uh, the Meals on Wheels ministry, the sale from this one will go towards the, um, I know it, Fix It Forum. And so not only will you get a good meal, but you'll help our outreach ministry. But you've got to sign up for those, so please do so. Uh, the, as you know, um, the whole situation and landscape with uh, the coronavirus and COVID and all of that is always changing, and uh, we've had some significant developments here of late, and so I hope that you will pay attention to your inbox uh, here this coming week. I'm going to, uh, as I had sent out about a few weeks ago, a letter to the whole congregation uh, telling where we are and where we're going. I'm going to be sending another one of those out, so don't just scroll past real quick. Stop and click on it and read, and uh, you'll know what's going on. After you read that, if you have any questions, just let me know, and uh, I'll, I'll explain what we're doing. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven.
remove your communion wafer from your plastic bag at this time. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world, who by his death has destroyed death and by his rising to life again has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and dark angels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. For on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ has come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, <clears throat> that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Please kneel. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Let us now receive the gifts of God for the people of God, saying together, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 On behalf of the whole church, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Thank y'all again. Oh, excuse me. Thanks again. Thank you, sir. Hello. 